Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Quest for Glory 4, Shadows of Darkness. And we are in the Adventurer's Guild, in the northern part of the town of Mordavia, where everyone we have met so far has been peaceful, but very suspicious of us. And in the last episode at the end, we read the logbook and learned the tale of Piotar, and how he was fighting against the cultists of this evil creature known as the Dark One, and how the mage Irana, who has been very well referenced in all the different Quest for Glory games, disappeared, and now her staff rests in the entrance to this town. So let's continue looking through the Adventurer's Guild. Let's look at the bookcase. Let's read some books. Which book do you want to read? All of them. Let's read Hero Magazine. As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting, you find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. There are a series of articles about the land of Mordavia. The town originally grew up around Castle Borgov. The Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. The chapter on fauna describes a number of interesting creatures. The Necrotor is a vicious carnivore with big, sharp teeth. Some of the other monsters sound even more horrific. In the forest lives the Lishi, a creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. You learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered unmarried woman. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They try to avenge themselves by drowning any man foolish enough to approach them. You could really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? Oh man, remember what games used to come in boxes? A lot of you probably don't, but they used to come with manuals. You really used to get your money's worth. Let's read the uh, brochure. The book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium, predict that someday one of my descendants will become the subject of a major computer game. The Castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, how cheesy can you get? Okay, a little bit of fourth wall break in there. That's fine. How about creative casting? The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways, such as calming a fire, using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break, and so on. You pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell casting. Except I won't be casting many spells. How about Talk Fu? This book teaches the ancient oriental art of Talk Fu. How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. You get lost somewhere between karate and kuksur. Wow, they would never put that in a game these days. There'd be like a Twitter riot about how racist that is. How about essential exercise? This book teaches you how to use the stair stepper to build strong leg muscles and talks about the importance of whole body development. It says to build up your strength gradually by adding weights to the baskets. You know, there should be a book here about how to climb. I think maybe it might be bugged because I imported this paladin character who apparently has some magical skills, which is why we got creative casting instead. Maybe it thinks we're a mage. I hope that's not a problem. Let's move the bookshelf. Nice try. But the bookshelf won't budge. If there's a secret passage around here, it's hidden a different way. Let's see if it'll still let us do the climbing. You pick up the rope and grapnel set and tie it onto your pack. Ooh, it does. Good. Well, that was fun. Now you feel like climbing something even higher, like Mount Tana. Sweet! I'm already an expert climber. Alright, let's use the exercise machine. Actually, can we get weights to put in it? Any more weight might strain your muscles. Try working with the weights you already have in the baskets. Okay. You don't have to tell me twice. 
and notice your stamina goes down. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. All right, fun. So that was the Adventurer's Guild. Let's go check out what's going on over here. Hey, it's an old guy. How you doing? I... I... I am Nikolai. Have you seen my honor? No, no, can't, can't say I have. How about some rumors? Honor? Have you seen my honor? No, man, I haven't seen Anna at all. What about the town? Can you tell me anything interesting about the town? I am looking for Anna. Have you seen Anna? Okay, he's not gonna tell me anything. Let's look around. Okay, let's get this straight. If the windows are eyes, and there's a nose and a mustache above the door, then the door must be a mouth. A set of brightly colored pull ropes hangs down in front of the door. Or maybe they're just stray mustache hairs. I like how he says gulp instead of like making a gulp noise. I guess it's hard to make a gulp noise. Let's try it. Yeah, you probably didn't hear that. I just gulped, I guess. I guess you can be like, whoop, like you can make it really full of character. I don't know. The sign reads, Dr. Cranium. You wonder what sort of medicine he practices. I don't know. Let's ask him. Oh, yes. This is the puzzle section of the game. Lovely. The bust's eye seem to follow you as you walk through the hallway. There's a sign on the door. It says, warning, do not open without appropriate precautions. The sign says, this is the key maze. It's a truly impressive, original, multimedia work created out of whitewash and sawdust. The sign on the door says, Dr. Cranium's private laboratory. Entrance by prior appointment or demonstration of superior intelligence only. This strange device is labeled Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor. Hmm. I wonder if that stands for something. Be careful, it might be a trap. Okay, Admiral Akbar. How interesting. It sounded as though someone knocked on the other side of the door as well, several times. You hear something bouncing around behind the door. A lot of somethings. Well, let's just throw caution to the wind here. Oh, crap. Am I dead? Oh no, you've been antwerped. Fortunately, these are just baby Antwerps, so the attack wasn't fatal. Huh. Okay. There is no response to your knock. You don't hear anything behind this door. Alright, let's do it. Behind the door is a sort of rat maze, but it's missing the rat, or whatever is supposed to be traversing the maze. All right, let's talk to this thing. Do I want to identify an animal? All right, so this will tell you what to feed certain animals. And I guess the only animal I see in here are those antwerps. So let's, let's identify it. Is it bigger than a bread box? No, they're kind of like babies. Is it smaller than an ant? No, they're bigger than an ant. Is it black and white and red all over? No. Is it yellow and does it weigh 500 pounds, have wings, and have an attitude? No. 
Is it gray and wrinkled and lives in a tree? No. Is it gray, wrinkled, wears a hat, and says, only you can prevent savanna fires? No. Does it bounce? Yes, it does bounce. You want an elephant on a pogo stick, no doubt. No. Is it blue, avocado-shaped, and sings Waltzing Matilda? No. Must be an Antwerp you want. I only threw in Waltzing Matilda to make it tougher. Feed it avocado. Yes. Huh. I seem to recall that my rations are avocado sandwiches. Yes, that's correct. Excellent. Okay. You bait the trap with avocado from your sandwich. Avocado was never high on your list of favorite foods anyway. The trap starts working. Heresy. Avocados are awesome. You've caught an Antwerp. It's simply amazing. Neat. Let's get him. The Antwerp has a soft, delicate fur over a basically rubbery base. Huh. I can't take him? Oh, you know what? Maybe he's already in the maze. This is the Antwerp maze. Antwerps are naturally bouncy, so all you have to do is continually rotate the maze until the baby Antwerp bounces over to the key, then out through the exit. Oh man, I hate puzzles. Alright, so I gotta get to the key, and he bounces. Alright, so I think the best way to go would be to go here... And then here. Or I could go here and here, but I have to try not to get to the exit. Alright, let's do that. Alright, so I wanna wait till he gets to the top. I missed. Oh, now I want him to be at the bottom. Yeah, all right. Now the top. Okay, now the bottom. All right, we're doing it. Now I need him kind of in the middle. Okay, that's not what I want. That's not what I want either. Perfect. All right, I don't want him to go to the exit though. So let's wait till he's, oh crap. This isn't gonna work. Because if I do it here, he'll go out the exit. If I do it here, he'll fall in the hole. So the only way I can do is here when he comes back to where I already was. Oh boy, here we go. So we have to go all the way around. Let's be fast about it. All right, that didn't work. I gotta be careful here. I don't wanna fall into that black hole. Okay. This time I gotta be careful too. I gotta do it right in the middle or it's not gonna work. Whew. All right, once again in the middle. Okay, at the top. At the top again, gotta be really careful not to go into the black hole. Awesome. Dang it. There we go. And go. All right, we got the key. 
Now we just have to get out the exit. Okay. Oh, dang it. All right, we just have to get him right at the top. Congratulations. Ooh, all right, the I am the puzzler. Get Dr. Cranium's laboratory key from the maze. You add the key to your key ring. Well, thank goodness that's done. Let's go into this door now. Oh, are you serious? Another puzzle? All right, let's see. Nope. All right, that's looking good. Okay. Excellent. That doesn't look entirely right, though. There's, it just doesn't fit really well here. Maybe... There we go. All right. But this still isn't working. Let's... This here. All right, and this here. So that's the green key. Then we have the red. Okay, that's solid. Purple goes here. All right. Now... Oh, red here. Now these obviously work. So I guess we'll just switch these two. No. Okay. All right, what am I doing wrong here? This all seems to work fine. So this needs to go under this, but then this is all messed up. Huh. All right, well this definitely works. This purple, this works. And this appears like it works. Oh, sweet. Great. Managed to find Dr. Cranium's keyhole and open the door. You pass through into Dr. Cranium's private laboratory. Go me, Marcus Aurelius. Quickly, Igor, the fluid. I must have the fluid. Oh, excuse me. I thought it was Igor coming in to assist me. He helps out in the lab sometimes. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, you're not going to get any of my fluid. Dr. Cranium looks considerably more like a demented wizard or mad scientist than a real scientist. Despite his white hair, you suspect that he's no more than middle-aged. He also seems to have developed a significant paunch. Root beer belly, no doubt. What's that thing? It's a beaker full of eyes, and they all seem to be looking at you. Huh. Dr. Cranium likes to say ahead of his competitors. Ha 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 ha. Dr. Cranium has an orderly personality, so he likes to arrange things in tables. <laughs> a contraption looking nothing quite so much as a giant ray gun points towards the operating table. What's this? You are in an incredibly cluttered laboratory. Flasks, vials, jars, and tubing cover every surface. Experiments are in progress everywhere. All right, let's just talk to him. Who are you? My name is Dr. Cranium. I am Mordavia's chief scientist and a certified genius. Some call me mad, but I much prefer Dr. Cranium. 
Ah, yes, science. I'm glad you asked. Science is the process of systematically increasing our knowledge of the world through observation and experiment. Unfortunately, some of the townspeople here seem to have no concept of the wonders of science. Some of them even claim my little inventions are magical. Such poppycock! There's no such thing as magic. Still, the townspeople insisted that I should be able to use my magic to cure wounds and sickness. I told them that I am a scientist, not a doctor, but they wouldn't listen. I had little choice but to concoct some simple elixirs. They were childishly pleased. Science is really so simple once you understand it. All right, cool. I can get potions from him. If you want to improve your stamina, then you should make sure you eat a healthy diet from all the different food groups and get plenty of aerobic exercise. That is science. Oh, you must mean my patented healing drink. You may have my last one. Unfortunately, I have forgotten the formula for its main ingredient. If you can help me remember it, I will be able to make some more healing drinks, although the work is very time-consuming. Um, the formula for healing drinks? Uh, water? And... Fire? And pizza? And air? And earth? Together we're Captain Planet? No? Somehow, that doesn't seem quite right. Maybe you better check your manual and try again tomorrow. Oh, wow. Long before the days of DRM, this was what they used for copy protection. So you can't get healing potions unless you look in the manual. And since, I mean, I don't have a manual. I, I bought the game on Steam, so I'm sure there might be a digital manual I could look at. So I'll do that on my own time. But anyway, let's talk about Poison Cure. Oh, oh, you must mean my new universal poison antidote. You may have this one, but I will need some help with the formula to make more. Also, I am afraid I only have time to make one each day. Somehow, that doesn't seem quite... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ask Dr. Cranium if he can spare an empty flask for specimen collection. Of course, of course! <laughs> I am always delighted to assist scientific research of any kind, and I have plenty of flasks. You may have this one. And experimentation. Experiments are the meat and drink of science. First, you must come up with a hypothesis based on your understanding of the scientific elements. Then, perform an experiment to test the hypothesis. Afterwards, you have a pizza. Scientific elements. Earth is for solidity and stability. Air gives freedom and movement. Fire provides power and energy. Water, fluidity and life. Pizza, of course, is the most important element of all. Pizza represents the essence of well-roundedness and regaining strength. Most importantly, you can have it delivered in under half an hour in most areas. I don't think they deliver pizza here. No. How about magic? There is, of course, no such thing as magic. There is only science. Still, you would be amazed at how gullible some people are. Just the other day, someone gave me this scroll saying it was a magical spell. Can you believe that? It is purest poppycock. Nothing on here makes any sense whatsoever. Here, you may have this as a reminder that magic is a figment of fevered imagination. Only science is real. Obviously, Dr. Cranium needs to take a correspondence course from the famous wizard school. As you read the scroll, you find that you have learned the incantations and gestures with which to cast a glide spell. Then the scroll vanishes. There, you see, it was not even a very good piece of parchment. Fell right apart. Wow. So, again, we're not going to be doing the magic path here, but apparently they're allowing me to do it if I want. Igor is the gravedigger and tombstone carver. 
Uh, business has been slow lately, perhaps because there are very few people left in town. So Igor sometimes comes in to help me with my work. Igor has had less work of late. The forest is just as dangerous, but there aren't very many people left in town who are stupid enough to go out there at night, you know. <laughs> I like to think of it as a sort of evolution in action. <laughs> Igor is carving out quite a niche for himself in the gravestone business. You might say he is well on his way to becoming a rock star. <laughs> then again, you might not. The cemetery is outside of town to the east. It has proven a fruitful source of materials for my experiments. There are also some interesting and cryptic puzzles to be solved there. Yep, this is the pun guy. How about the fluid? Essential etheric fluid is an important ingredient in my formula for reanimating dead bodies. It contains the essence of the element of water, the most important ingredient in life science. This laboratory is where I perform some of my most important research. Lately, I have been trying to bring life back to a dead body, and to brew the perfect cup of tea. I've done one of those things. <laughs> Reanimating the dead is just another day's work in the life of a scientist. Even science cannot bring a person back right the way they were, but one can use scientific principles to restore the semblance of life and energy to formerly dead flesh. The one alchemical combination that I have thus far been unable to fully analyze is that of a good cup of tea. I'm sure there must be a way to duplicate the effects of nature, but the results have not been promising so far. Perhaps you would like a cup of spearmint and beefsteak tea? Uh, I thought not. This is even harder than rehydration solution and reviving dead tissue. Uh-huh. Research is the heart and soul of science. Without constant experimentation to prove or disprove one's hypotheses, the scientist is left trying to solve the world's problems by guesswork. That is hardly the most efficient way to achieve results. I try to maintain a modest selection of useful experimental equipment in my simple laboratory. Unfortunately, it has become very difficult to obtain the most modern scientific accessories since the road out of the valley became closed by the swamp. Mad? Mad? They all call me mad, but what do they know of madness? I am not mad. A bit perturbed about the world situation and how I get so little respect, perhaps, but certainly not mad. All right, well, you've convinced me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this episode. We got to solve some puzzles and communicate with Dr. Cranium. And between episodes, I will open up my digital manual and I will get the formulas for the healing and stamina potions so that when we are back next episode, we will have those at our disposal. And then we will, I don't know, maybe we'll leave town. We'll explore the woods. There's a whole world available to us. So once again... I'm Marcus Aurelius. I hope you're having a good time watching this, and I'd like to thank you very much for watching it. Have a good one.